followed by slow and sloppy and not real impressive and not real aggressive. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, following Ohio State's first win under Ryan Day as the head coach, not the interim coach, as he won three last year, but Ryan Day's debut at Ohio Stadium as the head coach. And, of course, Justin Fields at quarterback. And it looked mighty impressive for a quarter against a Florida Atlantic. So that's got to be taken into consideration as the Buckeyes won it 45-21. to So I don't know if there are any real concerns here. Uh, there has to be a judgment made as to whether Ohio State uh, came out, looked great. And then did Florida Atlantic, did they adjust and play Ohio State much better? And that's the concern that the coaching staff did not come up with a counter adjustment. And the athletes started to get beat up front, especially uh, the Ohio State offensive line started to get beat up front. Or did the athletes on the Ohio State Buckeyes football team just take some time off after 28 nothing. I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, human nature is that you don't press as hard uh, at 28 to nothing as you did when it was nothing nothing. That's just human nature. That's how it is typically. Uh, but also I think that there is uh, some concern there. There are some things to be fixed and not worry concern like this is a bad football team. Uh, this is one of the five roughly five best teams in the foot in uh, the nation and they'll just work things out. So Justin Fields looked good, but again, he was basically throwing against air. The first four drives of the game, guys were wide open coverages busted. Either coverages were busted in some instances, or the Ohio state athlete on the outside was just so much better than the FAU guy covering him. Guys were wide open. They go right down the field in the first series uh, Fields on the keeper with the play fake to J.K. Dobbins kept it and the C parted. The linebackers with, went with Dobbins and uh, Fields ran for a 50-yard touchdown, 7-0. K.J. Hill, as reported by the broadcast, the game broadcast, made the comment this week that Justin Fields thrives off of pressure. I find that a bit interesting since I don't know when he's faced pressure at this level, because he was Jake Fromm's backup, he didn't play any meaningful minutes, and when he did, he wasn't allowed to throw, and now he's playing in practice um, with K.J. Hill and the other receivers as the number one quarterback, and even before he was announced the starter, he was expected to be the starter. I don't know that there was a whole lot of pressure there, but that's what K.J. Hill says. And, uh, of course, he's up close and personal. But uh, just thought I would throw that around. As well as another comment made by Urban Meyer several times concerning Jeremy Ruckert, uh, the young tight end who was wide open for a 25-yard touchdown after the big DeMario McCall punt return made it 14 to nothing. The sophomore tight end turned in his first career touchdown. Urban Meyer had said a number of times and considered the tight ends that he has coached, recruited, signed, and then coached, has said that Jeremy Ruckert is the best tight end recruit he has ever pursued. Jeffrey Okuda had a pass breakup early in the game. He had a number of plays behind the line of scrimmage. He's a top 10 NFL pick in the 2020 NFL draft. Uh, Chase Young, similarly, just a monster off the edge. He had a sack early in the game as Ohio State's defense looked as impressive or maybe more so than the offense. Justin Fields hit uh, Benjamin Victor, who shook a defender. Ran Well, actually, the first Benjamin Victor catch was wide open for a touchdown down the left sideline as he broke the pylon, scored uh, two of his uh Catches his only two catches on the day, 65 yards. So the Victor touchdown made it 21 to nothing. Later on the day, Benjamin Victor had a long catch in which he shook the defender, turned up field, and it was good to see Benjamin Victor for Ohio State fans. Two catches, no drops. Chris Olave hit the post again, shook the defender, got him turned around, went to the post as he uh, faked to the outside to the corner. And this was just simple in the first quarter, 28-0 Ohio State. On a down note for FAU, B.J. Emmons, the Alabama transfer at running back, 
who carried the football, not extensively, but they got playing time with the Tide, went down, and that looked to be somewhat serious, possibly did not get back in the game. Uh, Justin Fields at one point took a shot. There were a few times in which he ran the ball uh, that he could have slid. Uh, to his credit, he didn't. He took the hit, but we know the precarious state of Ohio State, the Buckeyes' uh, depth chart at quarterback. And Justin Fields also was left in the game the entire game as uh, things got a bit tight at uh, 35-14. FAU, after Ohio State scored on its first three drives, got stop after stop after stop after stop. Ohio State on its first four drives, all touchdowns, 13 plays, 200 yards. That's what, 15 yards per play? On the next five drives, three punts, Two turnovers on a Dobbins fumble and an also backwards pass that was picked up by FAU. Ohio State ran 22 plays for 64 yards. That's less than three yards per play. Total yards in the first half, Ohio State still dominant, more so on the defensive side. 280 yards for the Buckeyes, negative 14 for FAU. Buckeyes led at 28-3 at the break. Um... Brendan White had a really nice play on a pass breakup on a bomb down the field. Uh, Harrison Bryant, uh, FAU's biggest threat on offense, started to make some plays. FAU put together a few drives. Uh, Chase Young actually deflected a pass on a third and 10 play in the red zone that would have picked up the first down for FAU, kept that drive alive, and kept it at 28-6 to on the field goal. Ohio State had a safety. It should have been ruled a safety. There was a Uh, A short screen pass with FAU at its own one-yard line. The receiver was behind the line, behind the uh, end zone line, and he was thrown for a loss, didn't extend the ball past uh, the goal line, and it should have been a safety for Ohio State. Uh, FAU was able to move the ball out, gain some first downs, and avoid some problems there. Uh, Jeremy Record came back for his second career touchdown, on the play-action TD, 35-6, four catches, 38 yards for Ruckert. J.K. Dobbins had a nice game. Early in the game, he looked fresh. He looked like his freshman year, in fact. 21 carries, 91 yards as he shook a ton of guys, carried guys. But later in the game, again in the second half, as the Ohio State offensive line was not able to do much with FAU up front. They looked dominant. They were dominant in the first quarter. Then after that... Couldn't move uh, FAU's front off the ball to create running space, and Justin Fields was running around a little bit, buying time. Now, Justin Fields should have delivered the ball a little bit quicker on a number of plays. You would expect that he will do that at some point. Florida Atlantic had two touchdown drives in the second half, 15 plays, 79 yards, eight plays, 76 yards. Again, can we evaluate the Ohio State defense based on those drives? I don't know. It was 35-6 to six at the time that FAU uh, was able to finally establish some level of offense under Blake, um, Lane Kiffin. Blake Hobile, one of the last plays of the game. Ohio State was leading 42-21 and driving. Uh, I believe that uh, Ryan Day just wanted to see his field goal kicker try to hit one from deep. Hobile did from 46 yards, and Ohio State closed out the scoring at 45-21. So again, splendid start for the Buckeyes on both sides of the ball. The defense was more dominant for an extended period of time all the way through the first half into the third quarter. The offense basically had, bam, four drives that looked flawless. Then nothing after that. Buckeyes win at 45-21. They prepare for Cincinnati and a much stiffer test in this one in week two. Ohio State fans, let me know what you have on the Buckeyes as they win in Ryan Day's head coaching, head coaching debut. We'll be back with more instant analysis throughout the day right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.